week three. Breathe it in, fellas. Boys and girls. And everybody else in between of all ages. Breathe it in. We've got... We've got a beautiful slate of games for the third week of the NFL season. Mostly, you know, in prime time. And we start out on Thursday night, of course, you know, with Thursday night football. This time around, it'll be the Dolphins taking on the Jags, Gartner Minshew. And then improving Jags offense, taking on a kind of struggling, but, you know, at the same time, kind of often misplaced Miami team, you know. I mean, come on, let's just be real. It, it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams fare. It's always interesting to see how teams fare on a Thursday night game, you know, four days removed from the Sunday game. But I don't really have much for this matchup at all. Um... Aside from the fact that it should be a good game, if Gardner Minshew does indeed go off, start throwing it to his receivers, then you better believe that the Jags will win this game. Which Ryan Fitzpatrick will show up? I don't know. Well, let's go on to the Sunday slate then. And we start with, oh my goodness gracious, the light. Just two teams riddled with injuries to key players. We're talking. Saquon Barkley, done for the year. Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa, yeah. Which one of the Bosa brothers, done for the year. Mostert, injured. Jimmy G, injured. Richard Sherman, injured. Just injuries to hell and back. George Kittle had an ankle injury. You know, the 49ers are banged up. I mean, yeah, sure, you can blame it on no free season, but the 49ers are banged up. And what can Danny Dimes do now? You know, now that he doesn't have a sure, you know, runner and catcher in the form of Saquon Barkley. What can what can he do? What can Daniel Jones do? What can Joe Judge and this team do now? What about that Washington football team? You know, they had momentum and then they lost it. They went back down the cliff to a you know, struggling tight Washington as they've been the last I don't know, a few years. And they're taking on the Browns. Again, it should be an interesting matchup there. Um, you know, which Browns team is going to show up. You never know. The Browns team that was supposed to have all of this talent and make it work or the Browns that are just consistently underperforming. We'll see what happens there. Bengals, Eagles. Eagles are another team that's just banged up to all hell. And Joe Burrow continues to look and find himself, you know, as a rookie quarterback on this team for the Bengals. What can Carson Wentz do, you know, now that, you know, him and Doug Peterson and just the whole entire Eagles organization have been just molly the last two weeks, you know. Offensive line, atrocious. Defense, atrocious. Wentz, not producing. What can this team do? What can they do? And the big game, keep your eye on at noon, you know, or 1 o'clock, you know, depending on where you are, is the Raiders and the Patriots. Raiders are 2 0 coming up the Foxborough and everything like that. And let me tell you, the momentum is riding high. The AFC West is looking pretty interesting, you know, now. I mean, sure, the Raiders will have to face off the Chiefs twice, you know, soon. But it's looking pretty interesting right now with both the Chiefs and the Raiders at the top of 2 0. How can the Patriots bounce back after a stunning loss last week that went down to the one yard line again? And, I mean, the Raiders are looking like their offense is clicking. You know, you got Josh Jacobs in that backfield. He is a workhorse, he, is, he, he could be one of the best backs in the league this year, I think. You know, if he stays completely healthy and everything like that, due to the way, you know, injuries have been going. But, I mean, Derek Carr and company got it rolling. John Gruden's coaching is getting to him, boys. It's getting to him. It's getting to the Raiders. And next up on the docket is the surprisingly 2-0 Bears taking on the 0-2 
blew a 20-point lead, got blown out by Seattle pretty much in the first week of the season, the Atlanta Falcons. And, you know, I'm probably going to keep my attention focused on the Raiders and the Patriots in another game that we'll talk about in a minute. But um, this also should be interesting. You know, it depends on which version of these two teams is going to show up again. I mean, it's, 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 it's just the way it's been. The same old narratives have always been that which Trubisky is going to show up. Which version of Dan Quinn's coaching and Matt Ryan, you know, you know not either, you know, throwing the ball, slinging it down the field, getting all these passing yards, touchdowns and whatnot, or is it going to be the Matt Ryan that leads the Falcons offense to absolutely nothing, just lethargic on offense, lethargic on defense, and blowing leads? Which, which one of these two teams is going to show up? I don't know. We'll have to find out. Oh, but the other big one at noon is going to be the undefeated L.A. Rams who have surprised everyone so far. You know, Jared Goff is looking much better this year. Looking way better this year than what he has been, you know, the past couple of years. You know, ever since that Super Bowl loss to the Patriots a couple of years back. And it, it looks like he's going back to that form. You know, he's got weapons all around him. He's got, he's got Higby. He's got Robert Woods. You know, that Rams defense led by Aaron Donald. Boy, something else right there. Scary, scary defense. And the Bills. A team that, you know, I honestly have not really, you know, seen too much about. You know, they played the Jets, the Dolphins the first two weeks, and that's really not much of a gauge. But now there's a real interesting test in front of the Bills, and it's going to be fun to watch this game. I'm telling you, Josh Allen versus Jared Goff is going to be one hell of a matchup, and I'm so excited to watch it. Probably going to be keeping my eyes on that and the Raiders Patriots, like I said, on Sunday. And to round out the noon slate, you know, we got a couple more here. Um, Titans taking on the Vikings. Um, it's been a struggle for Kirk Cousins. It's been a struggle. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, Ryan Tannehill getting a lot better. Derrick Henry has been nowhere to be found the first two weeks. Titans defense looking pretty nice. They, they got some key stops against Jacksonville and stuff like that. They they pretty much had the game won in Denver, but, um, you know, things happened in that game. And, and, I mean, they pretty much had the game won very quickly in that game. And it just, it took them forever to get the W against the Broncos in that game. It took them forever when they should have had easily coasted. But we're not going to talk about week one because that was week one. Um but the Vikings, I think, you know, there's all the pieces need to gel back together for the Vikings to in order to win this game against the Titans. All the pieces need to gel right there. It's right there in front of them. And, and certainly lastly, but not least, in, in the noon slate anyway, is the Texans and Steelers. Steelers' defense is fierce. T.J. Watt and company. You know, that's something fierce with Big Ben. Looking like the Big Ben, of the, you know, a few years ago where he was tossing touchdowns and stuff like that all over the place. You know, you got Juju on that offense. You got Chase Claypool on that offense now. He's looking to emerge. You know, James Conner, he's a good back. And, you know, if that defense gets rolling and the Texans offensive line continues to struggle, it's going to be another long day for Deshaun Watson because, I mean, the Ravens harassed Deshaun Watson. The Ravens and the Chiefs harassed Deshaun Watson the first two weeks. I mean, it's just been awful, awful sledding for the Texans right now. Been awful for them. Now, on to the 3 o'clock slate of games. And we start out with a couple of regional action-type games with the Panthers and the Chargers and the Jets and the Colts. Both of these games are going to be very interesting. I think, you know, who's the quarterback for the Chargers? You know, Christian McCaffrey is injured now. And he's been, you know, I mean, the Panthers are just looking for an identity without Cam now. I mean, it, it's, it 
It's gonna be interesting, but I'm not gonna watch this game because you know who is on. You know who will be on. You know, you see this shirt right here. If you see the shirt, you know who's gonna be on. You know what I'm gonna be watching. But we're not gonna talk about that right now. Jets are just bad. I mean, as long as Philip Rivers doesn't throw any interceptions, I think the Colts will be fine. You know, the Colts will be fine as long as they don't, you know, throw any interceptions and whatnot. Before we talk about the team that's on my shirt right here, we got the Broncos taking on the Bucks and the Cardinals taking on the Lions. Now, both these games should be pretty interesting as well. I think, you know, the Lions, they have had leads and then they have proceeded to blow them. Now, you had a 14-3 to lead against the Packers that just proceeded to get molly whopped. Just absolutely destroyed, utterly disappointed, utterly beaten. And then now they're playing the Cardinals, who's got Kyler Murray. He's starting to run that air raid by Cliff Kingsbury to perfection. And, you know, air raid is only like 10 plays out of 20 different formations. So, you know, Lions better, better get it up. They better wake up. As far as the Bucks are concerned, they just need to... You know, keep trying to get the offense to work. You know, you got all that talent. Mike Evans, Gronk, Tom Brady, Leonard Fournette, Vita Vea on the defensive side. All that talent needs to work together and beat the Broncos. Because there, I don't think there's going to be a Drew Locke. He's, he's got a shoulder injury. Unless that shoulder heals up in time, I don't think he's going to be playing. I don't even know who the backup is for the Broncos, to be completely honest with you. And last but not least, in the 325 slate, my Dallas Cowboys with a struggling defense and anemic offense at times, taking on Russell Wilson, who has been dangerous. DK Metcalf, who has been lighting it up. That Seahawks defense, you know, it doesn't have that Legion of Boom-esque, you know, type thing anymore, but it's still lethal. That Seahawks defense is still lethal. The 12th man may not be on the field, but it might be a long day for the Cowboys if we don't get it together. We got to get it together. We cannot, you know, allow another 20 to nothing lead happen like that and have to come back from 20 down. We do not want that. Not at all. I think the key is going to be these two quarterbacks playing well and everything like that. If Russell Wilson plays well, it starts torching. That Cowboys defense because the secondary is still kind of hurting and we're missing tackles and open space and stuff like that. I think it will be a long day. It, it will be another long day. And, you know, as far as the Cowboys are concerned, again, we just got to start strong. That's all that matters is to start strong and stay strong throughout the duration of the game. If we can't do that, we can't, we can't win. We can't win. So, there's that, you know, I hope, you know, other, I hope there's a way for the Cowboys to win, but I'm seriously actually doubting this one. I'm actually doubting that we might win this game. But it, it, it'll be an interesting one nonetheless. And, I mean, it's just going to be another fun, you know, Sunday for NFL football. And then, you know, just to wrap up Sunday in a nice little bow, we got a mega matchup. A matchup of two future Hall of Famers. Once again, the Packers, led by Aaron Rodgers, has been, I don't know what in the world has been going on with the Packers. They've been scoring points on a whim. 40-plus points the first two weeks of the season. And the struggling Saints. I mean, Drew Brees, you know, he doesn't have Michael Thomas right now. I'm sure he'll be back. But he's, you know, the Saints... Sean Payton and the Saints still got a lot of talent. They still got a lot of talent. But it's just been a struggle. It's been a struggle, to be completely honest with you. They struggle against the Bucks, and the, and the mistakes and the struggles really showed up against the Raiders and that loss on Monday night. So, you know, what can the Saints do and to stop the Packers from scoring 40 again? Are the Packers unstoppable? We'll find out on Sunday. We'll find out on Sunday night. 
And then last, but certainly not least, I don't know how this matchup was selected for Monday night. This should have been a Sunday night game, to be completely honest with you. It feels like a blockbuster. We've had, you know, the three teams that are basically probably going to lead the AFC for a while, you know, in big-time games the last three weeks. We've had the Texans, who have unfortunately struggled to start out the year, and here we are with the Chiefs and the Ravens, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Holmes. Stout defenses on both sides of the ball. Great offenses. Yet, yeah, Ravens have a trio of backs in the backfield that can do, you know, everything. J.K. Dobbins is a guy that is pretty new to the thing. You know, he's pretty new to all this, you know, professional football and stuff. But he can run. He can run, he can truck you, he can run you over. And you know the Saints. I mean, not the Saints, the Chiefs. The Chiefs got the cheetah. They got Clyde Edwards Lair now, who's been just good. He's been good in the backfield. First week you watched him, first time we ever watched him, you know, tear it up on the NFL field again once against the Texans. He tore it up against the Texans. You know, that offensive line can, you know, just get things going. And stuff like that for the Chiefs. And let and just let Clyde Edwards Hilaire run it all day. I'm, I can guarantee you it'll be something. But I mean, this is going to be a war like it always is. It's it's the Chiefs and the Ravens. I mean, come on. These two teams are probably going to be leading the AFC for a long while. And I mean, it's just a matchup that just makes you salivate because... Both these teams, while not completely star-studded, have a lot of stars on both sides of the ball that can do whatever they want to oppose these teams because it doesn't matter. You can't stop them. You can't stop either of them. And whoever walks out with the W in this game, I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that one of these teams will be the one seed. I can guarantee you that right now. It, it might be the Chiefs, again, cruising to a Super Bowl. It might be the Chiefs going back to back, or it might be Lamar, you know, and the Ravens, John Harbaugh actually, you know, making up on that promise to go to the Super Bowl and stuff like that. But, yeah, this is going to be fun on Monday night. I can guarantee you that. And whoever wins this game, again, is just going to cruise for the rest of the season. I mean, Chiefs and the Ravens are already on the collisions course anyway, in my opinion, for the AFC Championship. But this this is this is a damn good start to things. And to end this out, you know, as always, like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Come to this channel and see what you have to think about what I've what I've got to say. With that being said, everybody, y'all take care. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.